Hi folks, as you know, we're here at Videoscape Europe in the gorgeous BAFTA building. Yes, and we're here with Steve Miller-Jones. Yes, he sounds like he has a rock star name. It's a pretty cool name, Steve. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. congratulate you on that first. <laughs> but um, first and foremost, you work at Limelight. Tell us a little bit about your role there and what Limelight is. Sure. So uh, at Limelight, our mission, if you like, mm. is to securely manage and globally deliver yep. digital content. Yes. And to delight audiences mm. and our customers around the world with exceptional quality and service. Fantastic. My role at the company yep. is uh, Vice President of Product Strategy. Mm -hmm. So my role is to look a little bit further out on the product roadmap, mm -hmm. the trends in the marketplace, right. um, and how we might respond and react to them in sort of two to five years' time. Nice. Um, and I promote the you know, values, benefits and solutions of the company Fantastic. a lot as well. Fantastic. And you're based here in London? I'm based out of London. Oh, nice, uh, nice. Yes. Uh, Very we're a global good. company. Okay. Um, we've got a network that spans over 100 locations, mm -hmm. a lot of countries, mm. about 45 terabits per second of capacity globally. Whoa, hello. Um, this is fantastic. Yeah. Tell me, where are you the majority of your clients? Are they here in the UK? Are they in North America? We have a pretty broad spread. Yeah. Um, we're an American company. We split pretty kind of 60-40 kind of okay. Uh, okay. thing for US and the rest of the world. Okay, interesting. I see you have Cynodyme as one of your clients. Can you name some other uh, clients that we might have heard of that work with you guys? We have a nice list of clients on our website. We have a lot of clients in yep. the media entertainment industry. Right. Uh, four of the top five yep. uh, gaming and yep. streaming and software distribution cu customers Fantastic. are ours. We work with many major broadcasters yes. you would know. Yes. Uh, many handset manufacturers, yes. uh, game console providers. Fantastic. Yeah. I love it. You've got to be everywhere these days. Now tell me something I particularly love about your business is the Limelight Report okay. that you put out yearly. Yes, I'm a big fan of it, as I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this are. Tell me a little bit, are you involved in that uh, per se or what's your role in that? So uh, our, our fantastic marketing team yeah. do a really great job of building up these state of online yes. reports. Yes. Um, they are um, effectively um, you know, direct market research. Mm. And then as a group, we all get involved and look at you know, what do they mean. And then you know, right. they get published by the marketing group. But what we're really trying to do is use that information mm. to inform well, where should we invest in right. policy? Where should we invest in improving right. the experience? Where should we invest in, um, you know, capacity. Right. What, what are people telling us they're right. going to be doing to consume content? Right. And how does that affect us? So yeah. yeah, directly plays into how we think about the marketplace. Fantastic. Well, it's super important to listen to consumers, people, and Limelight is doing that. They're doing robust surveys and then putting together all this information in the Limelight report. Um, tell me a little bit about kind of, I guess, from the Limelight report, to keep it in that world at the moment, what you guys are seeing trend-wise. I know you, um, you know, what are consumers saying to you, most importantly, they want more of, like, want less of, what are they willing to pay for, what are they not willing to pay for, all that sort of stuff. Sure. From, from from a consumer perspective, um, as consumers ourselves, we know yeah. on our phones, on our TVs, on the connected devices, we want immediacy. Yes. We want personalization. Yeah. And we're expecting it to be good quality. Right. Um, there are certainly generational gaps in how people consume content and differences mm -hmm. in ways of, that people choose to consume different pieces of content. Right. Um, but what we consistently see mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. yeah, if it doesn't start well at a mm -hmm. hybrid rate, mm -hmm. we're done. Right. If it doesn't download quickly, I'll move on. If yeah. it rebuffers, I'm going to walk away. Yeah. Um, and if I have to wait for it a yeah. lot, yeah. I'm really probably going to choose to do something else. You know, yes. everyone says, oh, I'll switch to a different app. That may yeah. not be the choice, but yeah. I do yeah. have a choice of what to do with my time. Absolutely. So those things certainly the, the consumers tell us. And then yes. we're seeing uh, demand for live. Yes. So live content online is absolutely uh, where the audience is going. Yes. And then we have this challenge of, you know, being the an additional service to broadcast, mm -hmm. um, are we able to drive latency down? So if you've got an additional ref cam or a fan cam or a companion stream, mm -hmm. is it at the same latency as the actual broadcast video? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're watching OTT versus mm -hmm. broadcast TV, you know, there are lots of right sharing going on, big Absolutely. challenges in the rights market. Yep. You know, is there a real massive gap in latency? Mm. So we've innovated in the latency arena. We have a mm. sub-second latency product in the CDN, mm -hmm. and we help broadcasters drive down to where they want to get to for their use cases. You know, um, table games, gambling, mm. any any kind of sports betting. Fantastic. You know, 
kind of video apps. You yes, need about yes. under a second of latency. Right. If you're really a broadcaster and you're focused on I want my UHD high quality video mm. for my connected TV, mm. you're probably trying to get somewhere between two and four seconds. Yep. And there are different technologies for those different parts of right. value chain. Right. So we're trying really hard to drive solutions mm. and our technology to solve for the sort of real wide range of latency mm. that exists. Fantastic. Now tell me, I mean, we, we're hearing from so many thought leaders uh, sure. here today, which is really fantastic about this conference. And one in particular, we just listened to Richard from uh, All4 TV. Uh, it's quite interesting in regards to his main message or my main takeaway from his speech was, it's not necessarily all about content. Yes, content is important, but there's other things that are going to be the differentiators between the OTTs that kind of come up ahead. And this comes down to technology, the consumers knowing what they want, the expectation that yes, it's not going to buffer. Do you feel that the OT company, OTT companies are getting that now? Because there used to be a big consult, you know, it was all about content, 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 content. Are they now realise that they need to invest in this infrastructure and technology? I think yeah. where we've got yeah. to with the infrastructure mm. versus say five years ago mm. Mm. and the services is that they are mm. now good enough right. to drive an at scale audience. Right. And so it is continuing to be a rights and content game. Right. Because everyone's now expecting, yes, of course it is It'll work. Quality. Yes. Of course it will work. There, there <laughs> yeah. is you know, yes. there is a continual capacity and bandwidth challenge. Right. Working in partnership mm. with ISPs, with broadcasters, mm. with content mm. owners mm. to understand mm. the dynamics and to build capacity mm. in the right places mm. for demand mm. is really critical to mm. success for all of us. Mm. It's not mm. any one of our individual problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I, I think the expectation that it will just work is there. Right. I think like events like the World Cup or the current Cricket World Cup or the IPL, you know, we look at where the rights are for Syria, we look at where the rights are for EPL. Right, right. And they're online. Right. So we're expecting it to happen. People are investing yep. their money in the content. Yes. So of course it yes. has to work. Yes. Um, so I, I think there's a combination play. Yeah. Here. Certainly without the content, you know, mm. people wouldn't browse Netflix. No, no, of um, course without not. Without the content, people won't watch live OTT. Right. So it's a chicken and egg piece, but yes. it, it can't then yeah. fall over in the technology no, side. No, Otherwise of course. We yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's all the way. So tell me, um, you guys obviously, you're, you're speaking to the OTTs daily, all different ones, understanding their challenges, their opportunities. Technologist and, mm. and a product guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, a content play would be would be important, yeah. but then we're really looking at um, how the companies are orientated at the digital transformation that's mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. So we hear a lot about um, the, the OTT content providers and platforms mm -hmm. going through this transformation to DevOps, right? right. Or, or being so much more engaged in the the um, operation of the, the software and platform. It comes to that, it, you know, success and measuring success and whatnot. What, what are the benchmarks here in OTT? I mean, we all hear about subscriber numbers. We hear about time spent online. You know, what are the metrics that you see are really getting across the message? Because it feels to me like everyone has not everyone, but every second or third OTT has two million subscribers and has, you know, what are the metrics that you think we'll see maybe now, maybe in six months, maybe in a year that are kind of more meaningful? Well, I think um, if I think about myself as yep. a subscriber, yep. uh, what, do I, what am I looking for and what would make me buy another one? Or, right. <laughs> as someone said earlier today, actually the most important thing yep. we have to do is cancel. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what would make me buy another one or cancel? As right. a subscriber, it's going to be um, something that is personally interesting mm -hmm. and that I can either do a transactional piece of, of um, purchasing with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or that really has the content play that's going to interest me and whoever else is around me. So, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I have a, a, a youngish family, mm -hmm. um, fast growing up. Yes. Um, so no doubt we all want to watch different things at different same times. Same times, yes. at the same time. Yes. Um, so so I, sharing capacity, so to speak. Right. So yep. we've, got to, we've got to all be smart about, mm -hmm. you know, how many subscriptions are we likely to carry? Mm -hmm. um, are there uh, specifics for different individuals or is it actually they're mm -hmm. down to there's a couple of main subscription options and mm -hmm. the TVOD, the AVOD, the alternative mm -hmm. methods of gaining mm -hmm. access to that content that I want right now. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. How does that all play into the model? Does it mm -hmm. all have to be, well, you know, I've got to choose between subscriptions yeah, or can yeah. I pick the content? So I think as a consumer, mm -hmm. that's interesting. From a technology perspective as mm -hmm. a service provider, you know, we know that the key metrics we've got to drive to right. for that to stick, yeah. you know, your startup, your bit rate, mm -hmm. you know, how 
much can you sustain a strong bit rate, mm. and how many times does it buffer? Those are the three mm. key metrics. Mm. Mm. There are a bunch of other metrics that, that work online that mm. everyone also looks at. Mm. But you know, if you can't drive your rebuffer mm. rate down, yeah. you're never going to keep that consumer. No. No. And actually, mm. you know, we've all got a device in our hands which mm. has got a really high screen resolution. Yep. If you can't drive a bit rate no. to that consumer. No. They're probably not going to stick around and watch more and more of your content. They're probably going to watch a little and then leave. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, combining the opportunity for accessing the content mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in a meaningful way for me, yep. and then with the actual policy metrics that matter, you yes. know, that your delivery partner, friendly uh, neighborhood delivery yes. partner can do, yes. that's what's really Yes, important. yes, absolutely. And that waste and monetization and the, the payment flow and all that is super important too. I have two very important questions for you. And okay. I'm sorry, I did keep this interview to the Limelight Report because I'm a huge fan of it. But my final two questions are, if there was someone, and there may or may not be, but hopefully there is, someone that you kind of embodies what entrepreneurship is for you, uh, it could be business leader, it could be someone in your family, it could be your dog perhaps, you know, you never know what inspires okay. people. Yeah. But someone that kind of embodies for you what it is to be an entrepreneur, um, who would that be? Oh, that's a really interesting question. Yeah. Um, when I was doing my MBA, we did yeah. a study on uh, Nike, Phil Knight. Oh, okay. Um, he, his individual drive and vision of what he wanted yes. trainers, sneakers yeah, to yeah, be, yeah, was yeah. pretty interesting. And how he drove the company, yeah. some might say, was a little uh, maniacal at certain points, but he came yeah. back and did it again. Yep. And he really yep. drove a brand that we believe in ourselves. Yes, about. yes. It's not really about believing in Nike, it's about right. I believe in me when I'm using that product. Right. That's a really interesting. Absolutely. Uh, so I, Absolutely. I, I quite like him. Yes. I'm sure there are others too. Yes. It's not good Stanford man, that one. <laughs> so, no, absolutely. And tell me, um, if you're a gambling man, I'm tipping you up. Not, Who not, knows? Not but if you were, um, we don't endorse it here, folks. We're not endorsing gambling. But if you were, would you be a blackjack, a roulette, or a poker player? So I have dabbled in poker. So okay. I, I, you know, it's less of a game of chance than the rest yeah, of the yes. There is some maths involved. <laughs> there is some thinking that partakes, people. At least you hope there is. No, yeah. definitely. Look, thank you for your time. Well, I hope you enjoy all that is Videoscape. And thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.